There have been a few times where we talk on the show about technique is more important than recipe. Today is one of those. We're going to go over one of the mother sauces or a variation of a mother sauce. We're going to make a Mornay, which is a bechamel. Okay. You remember? I do. It's one of the five mother sauces. With the addition, <laughs> one of the five mother sauces. With the addition of some cheese. Today I'm using Gruyere and some cheddar. We're going to do lobster Mornay. Rebecca de Mornay? Rebecca de Mornay? Huh? Is that how you say it? Oh, Risky Business. Yeah. Wrong show. Uh-huh. Rebecca de Mornay. That too. We're making lobster Rebecca de Mornay. We're not calling it that. Let me show you guys how to do it. The first thing we need to get started with is our lobster. Now, traditionally, uh, you're going to be looking at lobster, like whole, like the whole kit and caboodle. You know, the claws, the face, all the good stuff. Uh, I couldn't find them, and I imagine you guys wouldn't be able to find them either. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it the simple way. Uh, when you put these down on the griddle, make sure the tails do kind of fan out like that. CJ, can you see the tails? Make sure they look nice, because how they steam and hold uh, is how they'll, they'll stay, essentially. Uh, no oil necessary. We're not really imparting any flavor here. Uh, we're going to steam them. So I'm going to take a bit of water and a dome. Uh, let's do the water first. Water right over the top. Nice little bit of steam cruising. And let's dome them. There we go. All right, let those babies go for just a bit. They don't take a ton of time, six minutes. Uh, you actually don't want to cook them totally. So maybe around the four minute mark is when we'll get back to it. Uh, now over here on my burner, my unit has the side burners, which I absolutely love. If you can get one of these, I suggest you do it because it's pretty awesome. I've got a little pot or pan. Uh, let's get that cruise in up to medium high heat. And we're gonna add some unsalted butter. Let's let that butter get nice and melty. Then we're gonna add some flour. What we're doing here is we're creating a roux. Uh, roux is basically our thickening agent for our sauce. Now technically we're cooking the flour um, but there's not a whole lot of flavor going on right now. It's just butter and flour. So I'm going to take my, uh, I have some yellow onion, sweet yellow onion. I'm going to add that to the roux as it finishes. Now this is going to, uh, it's hard, if you've never made a roux, this stuff is crazy. Don't get it on you. Hasta lasagna. Don't. Yeah. That was for you, CJ. Okay, you. What I want to do is I want to sweat the onions in the roux as it finishes. We need three or four minutes on this roux before we get to the next part, which is our milk. Now, you notice it kind of looks like oatmeal a little bit. Would you say that, CJ? Clumpy eggs. Clumpy eggs. Uh, well, that's, uh, that needs another 60 seconds or so. Let's add a bit more water to our lobsters. Let's see how these are looking. You know, lobsters don't take long at all. So, yeah, there Holy you go. Smokes. Right, super quick. But I do want to steam them just a touch longer. Just another second longer. Uh, this one's, it's a really quick one. Ethan makes fun of me for saying that. This one actually is, actually is. All right, now our onions are starting to look gorgeous. Our roux is starting to change color slightly. It's getting a little darker. Now it's time to add our milk. Now this is where our roux becomes a bechamel, which is one of those mother sauces. We're gonna go just a touch of milk at a time and mix it in to make sure we don't get any lumps. A little Nobody bit at a time. A lumpy no. Milk. Chamel? Chamazzle. Bechamel. Awesome Bechamel. Oh, it's pretty, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, we definitely want a creamy sauce here. Creamy is what we're looking for. Uh, and then we're going to suspend the melted cheese in the sauce. That's why this one's really fun and versatile. Actually, if instead of milk, uh, adding milk to a roux becomes a bechamel, adding stock to a roux becomes what, CJ? I don't know. Come on. Ethan's got, it is a velouté, Ethan, God, Ethan for the win, way to be, Ethan, at least someone's paying attention on this show, not me, <laughs> so you can see how it's starting to come together, right, so this is why we add it slowly, so we can control the viscosity, how thick we want this sauce, but mostly what we're looking for is texture, we want velvety, a velvety, velvety beautiful <laughs> sauce, that was for you buddy, Thank you. you're welcome, it's looking good, a touch more, I'll be honest, I made a lot more than I was hoping. But that's what happens when you're making delicious Rebecca de Mornay sauce. Hey. It's just stuck in my head now that you said it. All right, a little bit more and we're kosher. Look how silky, look how velvety, see that? So I didn't mention it earlier, but you don't want to leave. This part of the process, you don't want to leave. We're becoming friends, we're part of the process. Don't leave a roux or a bechamel or a velouté. It's not like every roux for himself, right? 
<laughs> so, okay, we can, we can admit it. Uh, let's turn the heat off on this. Uh, that was plenty of milk. We might need to add a skosh of milk after. Let's hit that with just a bit of salt and pepper. Uh, remember, we're adding some cheese. Uh, Gruyere has a little bit of a saltiness to it, but if you were adding Parmesan, obviously it has a lot more salt content, uh, and so you wouldn't want to over salt. So season as you go, my friends. Look at that, velvety. It's really, really sunny. Look at that. It's awesome. It's beautiful as is, it's delicious as is, but this next step is really gonna take it to the next level. Now I've got some Gruyere. I'm gonna shred that nice and not super fine, but I'm gonna shred it because it melts a lot easier. Gruyere has a fantastic, uh, savory, beautiful flavor. I've also got some extra sharp white cheddar. I'm gonna shred that as well. Now once your cheese is shredded, it's gonna melt a lot easier. So let's go ahead and add that a little bit at a time into our bechamel melting the cheese, creating our Mornay. That's the Mornay, CJ. That's What do you say? Mornay. More rhymes, quit it. Don't need yep. the rhymes. Uh, to this, I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic powder. Uh, normally I would add fresh garlic, but I don't want the little granules of garlic. I only want the onion. So I'm using garlic powder and just a touch of paprika uh, for a bit of color and flavor. And the last little bit is some Dijon. Dijon's gonna give us that little mustard kick, that little bit of acidity that like lights the lobster flavor up. It's so, so good. Let's clean our board off just a little bit here. Uh, let's get to our lobsters. Now, again, we just, uh, we're steaming them, right? We didn't add any flavor, uh, but what we did do is we created a nice cooked, cooked goose. Huh? Forever Anyone? Long. Let's go ahead and pull these over to our cutting board. Now we might need to let these cool a little bit before we uh, get to handling them. Uh, but like I said earlier, a traditional uh, lobster mornay would be the whole entire lobster uh, with the claws, with the face and, and all the stuff. So when you split it in half, you've got a really long thing, but I, I couldn't find them. We're in Florida and we don't really see lobsters that often. I'm sure you experience the same sort of thing. Uh, so let these cool off. Now, once they're cool, we're gonna take our knife, split them right down the middle, creating two even halves. Now you see that gorgeous, beautiful, succulent lobster meat on the inside, I love it. Pull that meat out and dice it up, like bite-sized pieces, maybe slightly large bite-sized pieces. Uh, all right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of that stunning Mornay sauce, this cheesy, gooey goodness right down in the bottom of the shell. Uh, throw some of the lobster right on top of that and a bit more sauce over the top. Now you can see this is like a decadent flavor bomb. Let's finish with a bit more of that fresh grated cheese. Toss it back under our dome to give that cheese a chance to melt. Now this again, this is one of those things that's very classic French, fancy restaurant food, but it's not difficult. Delicious does not have to be difficult. We say it a lot. Say it all the time. I mean it a lot. 30 seconds and we can pull these lobsters off. Garnish for this is very simple. I'm gonna chop up a little bit of parsley, just nice and fine. It looks really nice, speckled around the dish and a bright, beautiful lemon, easy peasy. All right, plating is where like everything really starts to come together. Let's go ahead and take a peek, see how we did. My goodness. Ugh. What do you- I mean, ooh, yummy. <laughs> such a jerk. All right, <laughs> let's go ahead and pull all of these beauties over onto our plate. Now you can serve these one at a time for each person or serve a whole platter like this. I think it's really fun. Just like that. But look how melty and gorgeous the cheese got. Come on, that's that doesn't excite you, CJ? Dude, not in the least bit, because I Ethan? can smell it. It excites me, yes. I'm Bef excited. Before I add uh, my parsley, there's one little, last little thing you could do. You could use a torch and we can go right over the tops of these where that cheese was sitting. And let's just give it a little torch. A little bit of color. Oh, plus this is really fun to do. If you don't have a torch, it's pretty sweet. You should go get one. It's absolutely not necessary, but you know, you got it. It is cool. It's fun, it's cool. Last little bit, hit that with some of that beautiful parsley, nice and high. There we go. Now, again, very simple, very simple technique, very French technique, Mornay sauce, very simple. Steam lobster, very simple. This plate, stunning, elegant and extremely rich. You know, you may say to yourself, it seems like a lot of work for lobster, but it's lobster and it's worth it. It is so, so worth it. The aromas, the flavors, here we go. Lobster lovers out there. That's awesome. Let's take some of that lemon. I didn't squeeze it. I just put it on the a plate for garnish. A little squeeze of lemon. A little bit of acidity goes a long, long way. And you can see, 
since we hollowed out the shell, the lobster comes out super easy with that beautiful cheesy sauce in there. Oh yeah. Ethan, you like this kind of thing? I'm going to. Ethan's in, CJ? Nah, dude. I knew it. Probably just put a portion. Well, we're gonna kill all this. It's like four lobster tails. That's enough, two for each of us? Mm-hmm. Totally, totally. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out. Remember, um, when you're on my show, you're watching these recipes, let me know in the comments down below. We like to focus on technique more than recipe. So what did we learn today? Delicious doesn't have to be difficult. That's what we learned. Mornay sauce is just a bechamel with cheese or gruyere added. Roux, milk, bechamel, add cheese, Mornay. Ex-effecto, there it is. Easy. Now you know how to make mother sauces and beautiful French sauces. Uh, be sure if you have not yet, click the subscribe button down below and the little bell icon to make sure you get a notification every time we post a video. Watch all of the fun shows on the YouTube channel. Uh, but this is Cookie Repeat, where we like to help you become a better cook one recipe at a time. I'm your host, Chef Nathan Lippy, and I will see you guys mm, in the next delicious video. That sauce is where it's at, buddy.